<laughs> Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. We went to Murph or the Midwest Rip Rap Festival a few weeks ago, and we showed off the Lumen PNP and we actually ran a little SMT production line all in our booth. It was so much fun, you could come up and paste your own board, put it in the machine, hit go, it would populate all the parts, tossed it in a reflow oven, and you had like this blinky little board you could take home. It was so much fun. But on the way back, we were driving straight through Ohio from Goshen, Indiana, all the way to Pittsburgh, and we happened to be driving right by my friend Tanner, who runs his own SMT line. Tanner is the founder and CEO of Tritium Electronics, and his facility is so cool. He was super gracious with his time and showed us around his big SMT line. Everything I've been talking about on this channel has been all about the prototyping and mid-scale stuff, and I've done some mass production at previous jobs, but I thought it would be really cool to demonstrate what the mass production with the really high-end stuff looks like in the circuit board assembly space. My name's Tanner Ewing. I run Tritium Electronics. I started the manufacturing side of the business in 2016. Um, it was kind of to fill a need that my other business had, which was that we needed products built. We needed to build quality and in a reasonable amount of time and everything else. So we started it here to build our own products and then expanded from there to do contract manufacturing. On this line right here, you have a paste printer. This is uh, basically a, a print stencil and um, this machine pulls a board in. It'll photograph the fiducials on the board. Mm. It'll photograph the fiducials on the bottom of the stencil. It realigns the board so it'll move it around so that it aligns. It'll bring it up to the print surface, press it up against the stencil, and then the squeegee print head comes over and lays the solder down across that. So it's it's like a silk screen printer, but it's a little bit more sophisticated. An up and down facing camera in there, it's just one camera with a prism, mm -hmm. and it can switch the lighting so that it looks up versus looks down. Wild. And it can figure out where the where the fiducials are. That's so cool. This is um, the assembly on. Uh, it has 96 feeder slots. They're on removable carts, so there's 24 feeders per cart. Wild. So we can do, we have a bunch of these carts, we can do a changeover, start setting up a machine, mm. like setting up a job on the machine while it's running with another job. And then we just load these, um, load the carts into the machine, <laughs> they lock in place. And it loads them back in. That's it. That's incredible. This was a theme we saw a ton while touring Atridium. Being able to set up jobs while the machine is running and optimizing for uptime was a huge focus. Tanner even has entire machines dedicated on just offline job setup. He had a computer station, which was pretty much set up to just be the vision aspect of his pick and place, which lets him actually tune the vision pipelines for all the parts before he ever even gets to the pick and place. All the vision is already tuned by the time he gets over there. He did it offline with a separate machine while the pick and place was running a previous job. So it's got eight placement heads you can see back there. Sure. The nozzle exchange platter was awesome. It actually used some lasers to ensure that the nozzles exchange properly. This here is a process where it's exchanging all the nozzles and it's going through and cleaning them actually with a blade of air that it's moving the nozzles over. It's sick. load 16 trays into the unit next to the machine, uh, matrix trays, mm -hmm. and it'll sequence those chips into the machine as, as they're needed. Yeah. Okay, so what Tanner just mentioned there is something that I had never heard of before. A chip sequencer is an entire machine that just acts as a feeder for parts that come in trays. That's it. Instead of needing to take up a ton of space in the machine pick area with a bunch of trays, this machine is pretty much a cabinet that you fill with a whole bunch of trays of parts. And then there's a tiny pick and place in there that picks up the parts out of the trays and puts them on a little tiny conveyor belt. And then that conveyor belt brings the part into the pick and place to then be picked. It takes this huge cabinet full of parts and it shuttles them one by one, all the little parts on a conveyor, into a place where the pick and place can actually grab the parts. It's just a big mega feeder for parts that come in trays. It's so cool. When you think about it, those trays actually take up a ton of space in your pick area. So if there's some way that you can take that out of the area where the nozzle needs to go and just serve them up one by one, it's fantastic. Basically, the board will come across this conveyor here. It yeah. can be visually inspected. Um, there's, a, there's a check button, so you can actually just hit check and it'll, it'll spit it out into the reflow oven. Cool. This is a seven zone oven, so uh, it goes through a reflow curve to melt the solder. Sure. 
This entire thing is a reflow oven. Instead of having a tiny oven and moving the entire oven through the temperature curve of all the temperatures you need to hit to reflow your solder paste, there are actually seven zones with different temperatures in the machine, and it brings the boards through the temperature curve by moving it through the zones. And then when it comes up this side, we have an automated optical inspection. So then the panel will then go in this guy, and it will take the panel and slide it in and then check every single position. Yeah, so it photographs every other position, and then it'll, it'll give us like a green light down here for each position. Sure. Pass it for the whole board. That's incredible. <laughs> All totally automatic. Instead of sitting there for an hour right. or however long, looking at each individual placement, you can just pop it in this machine and have it tell you the answer for you. That's right. Yep. That's so cool. There's an entire bench dedicated to populating through hole parts into boards. Once they're populated, they go into this huge machine which does wave soldering. These boards are actually held over a little waterfall of molten solder, which touches the bottom of the board and all the leads, and it solders them as the waterfall kind of touches the bottom of the board. It just automatically solders all the through-hole legs sticking through the PCB. And you have this really cool carrier tray that you can put the boards into, and it'll cover up all the surface mount stuff on the bottom side that you don't want to solder. So this will protect all the components on the bottom side, and then sure. it has apertures where the solder can go through on it. And then at the end, you get a bunch of beautifully soldered, almost completely automatically assembled printed circuit board assemblies. What was the thing that once you bought it, you were like, I didn't know how much this was going to matter? Boy, yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. I, I actually think that way about a lot of the equipment we buy. Like okay. it's, it's almost like every machine you get, you're like, this new tool is really going to change things. Yeah. And I think that's true. Um, I think the biggest thing that helped us like with quality early on was going to solder printers versus trying to do hand printing. Pick and place equipment just automated so much of the like doing any amount of quantity with circuit boards yeah. by hand is just impossible. Yeah. So that was obviously a game changer. Yeah. Tanner actually has an entire other pick and place machine as well, which we took a really good look at, especially the feeders that he uses with them. They are smart feeders and they can talk back to the controller of the pick and place intelligently, but they also have a brake beam mode where there's actually a little sensor over the pick area for the feeder and it can detect when the nozzle comes down and picks the part and then just moves to the next part when it detects that. That way you don't need to talk back to the controller at all. It just sees that the beam was broken, a little optical sensor, a little brake beam sensor. And when it sees that, it knows, all right, it's time for me to move to the next part. No communication needed with the controller. It just does it automatically. It was pretty cool. So what did you have for your kit, for your line, right out of the gate when you were starting up? What was the first, the first few buys that you had that helped you get going? So when I, when I officially started, like we would do all of our prototype assembly just by hand. So we were hand printing circuit boards and then doing hand placement and then running them through a little Chinese uh, reflow batch oven. And then from there, um, well, after prototyping it early on, we were sending our, our product overseas for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, we had lots of lead time issues, um, quality issues, like boards that would come back and then need reworked and all that. And at some point I just said, I'm done with this. So um, we started with the little desktop pick and place machine, um, you know, did assembly with that first and then eventually got a man core, which was a bigger, faster machine. And then eventually we needed a pass through conveyor and um, we got solder printers and uh, all that other stuff. And then, you know, now we're running uh, 24,000 chips an hour assembly on. This wasn't the first mass production SMT line that I've seen, but it was definitely the one where I had the most opportunity to ask questions and learn a lot about it. So Tanner, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. It was so much fun to see your setup. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. What Problems. kind of paste are you using? Uh, chip quick. Nope. It's, it's a low tech. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that works for me. Y'all want to put a gold one in there?